Well, I'd like to hear your side of the argument, but it really doesn't matter. Hi, this is Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. And gentlemen, there's a new NPR PBS NewsHour Marist poll out that shows that as the uh, Trump hearings go, uh, impeachment hearings go into their second week, that some 65% of Americans say they can't even imagine anything that would change their mind regarding whether they think the president uh, is impeachable or not. Uh, 30% said it's possible, and most of those people were independents. Uh, Stephen Green, I find this fascinating because after listening to the testimony, and, and some 53% of the people say they're paying attention, that they are uh, fairly close or, or somewhat paying attention to what's going on. Um, after hearing some of this groundbreaking testimony, 88% of Democrats are more supportive in the wake of this testimony than they were before of having President Trump impeached and 83% of Republicans are less supportive. St Stephen Green, we're all in the same room. We're listening to the same conversations. We're coming out with very different ideas. What's going on here? Why, it's almost as though people are allowed to see the same thing and reach different conclusions. Is that the case, though? <laughs> I did no, they... I, I I was just being snarky there. <laughs> uh, what, what you did remind me of, though, was something my grandfather used to say. Uh, my grandfather Green, he defined conversation, and I quote, as a, uh, oh wait, let me make sure I've got this right, as an alternating series of unrelated monologues. <laughs> <laughs> And my uh, my little 21st century addendum to that was, and this has been stuck to my Twitter profile for years, I think, was, but then again, he was an optimist having never read the comments. So we've got, <laughs> we, we, we've got that part going for us now too, where on social media and the comments section and all the rest, not only do we uh, tend to, to, to reinforce our silos, but we get more and more strident about it. Uh, Glenn Reynolds has written about this in his new book, and I'd, I'd love to plug his book on social media, except I can't remember the title of it, and I read the dang thing. And it's, it's called Glenn Reynolds' New Book. I, I think so. If you look for it on Amazon, that is exactly how you'll find it. And it's about how social media is really just maybe the most anti-social institution ever. That said, uh, it's not as though these impeachment hearings aren't having an effect. I saw another poll, and this was just earlier today. We're recording this on Tuesday the 19th. And that poll said that uh, support for impeachment had fallen precipitously over the last week, and impeachment has been going on for about a week. So, and, and that, that's among swing voters. So among, among swing voters, the, the per percentage has fallen. Among Republicans, it stayed steady. Among Democrats, it stayed steady, whether that steadiness was, was high or low. So if the Democrats are hoping for a winning election issue, I'm not sure they're going to get one because they're turning off the very people that they need to win back after having lost them to Trump in those Northeast states in 2016. Uh, but to get back to your broader point, yeah, we do tend to talk past each other a lot. We tend to pick and choose what we want to hear. This this is all just human nature. Uh, the problems we have now, I think, they're, they're not new. They're just reinforced by these, uh, by, by social media and by, I think, not just the press, where uh, how many reporters that you read or wish you didn't read or watch on TV or any of the rest are on Twitter and on Twitter in a very big way. And the politicians, I'm not pointing fingers at Democrats or Republicans here, because after all, we have a president who I support and who tweeted his way into the White House. But we have a, a political class and a pundit class that instead of playing to the broadest possible audience like they did in the age of the big three networks, which had its own drawbacks, now plays to the most strident vocal sectors of social media. And so there is no perfect solution. Human nature is what it is, but we should be aware of it and take that into account when we're trying to decide whether or not people are just awful or just really, really awful. Bill Whittle, there's another interesting aspect uh, to this story, and this you have to read down pretty far into the NPR. I'm, I'm reading a text version, even though it's uh, ostensibly national public radio, but I read the text version of this story. 37% uh, of Republicans say, in effect, that it's wrong for President Trump to ask Ukraine to investigate uh, his political rival, and 16% of Republicans are kind of unsure about that. Um, however, most of them don't think it's an impeachable offense. I get these two stats here. Uh, Trump's approval rating month over month has stayed the same. 
It was like 42% last month, it's 41% this month, it's a statistically insignificant change. So his approval rating is unchanged uh, despite what is you know, portrayed on the left as a catastrophic process for his presidency. And then I don't think that NPR even understood what they wrote here. They said 52% of Americans say they definitely won't vote for Donald Trump in 2000 or in 2020 rather. Now, at the end of that, they mentioned that by the way, 54% didn't vote for Trump in 2016. <laughs> So it's so actually, it's a bigger win than last he's time. He's actually doing a little better now. Um, Bill, does it make any sense to have a participatory democratic republic when all of the participation is basically uh, a bunch of me monsters, as Brian Regan would call them, uh, talking about what they believe and then just waiting until the other guy gets done talking so that they can talk again? Uh, Steve mentioned silos. Um, it's basically a, a, another word for echo chamber. It's the idea that yeah. once you have strong opinions, the internet, especially the internet, allows you and draws you to to people and things that reinforce those opinions, and they end up amplifying those opinions and so on. And that's how the two sides diverge. Um, we, as humans, we learn through something called heuristics. And heuristics, as I understand it, is the idea that that once you've learned a fundamental building block, you don't need to relearn that building block, you file it. For example, if you touch a red hot stove, uh, you would probably not touch anything else that's red hot. You don't have to, you don't have to redo that experiment. You have hu heuristically learned that things that are glowing red are likely to be painful. Don't do it. And so simple heuristics like that allow us to say, don't touch red hot things. But the problem is, is that as as you get higher and higher up in the in the uh, in the realm of the complexity of the thinking, the heuristics start to drift, and they start to drift to the point where you we're not talking about the same fundamental base assumptions, and that's why people are 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 going uh, apart and they're accelerating going apart because the base assumptions are different. And since they're different heuristics, different assumptions, everybody is reinforcing their, their separate assumptions and, and off they go. So the, the, the problem with the internet is it doesn't allow you to really experience a lot of new ideas. And, and therefore you don't have the corrective experience of not only hearing somebody else's opinion, but, but hearing somebody else's opinion and also getting the humanity of the person, getting the, getting the, their, their, their sincere belief or whatever. That experience tends to, tends to bring heuristics back towards the, uh, a little bit towards the middle. For example, um, Democrats think that all Republicans are cold and heart, heartless races. But if they went and had a, and sat at a meeting, as I've seen many of them do, they come out of there thinking these guys are not as bad as I imagined that they were, but they only have that change because because they've had the experience of, of getting a new opinion. But that opinion has fundamentally changed the, their heuristic understanding of what conservatives are. OK, maybe they're not just these racist monsters. Maybe there's more to it. Maybe they're dissolute. They're, they're uh, delusional, but they're delusional for, for better reasons, whatever. And when you take that experience of hearing somebody you disagree with away, you not only uh, weaken the democracy, you weaken that person's human experience. I, I think hey, that there's... Uh, Scott, can, can I interrupt for, yeah, for just ahead, a second? You, you gave Bill a, 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 something that was really interesting, and I just I want to say just one thing about it. You, you mentioned the, the, the survey question was uh, something along the lines of, do you agree that it's wrong for the president to strong arm a foreign leader into investigating his political <laughs> rival? I was paraphrasing. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I realize, but I did read the actual question, and that was a pretty tight paraphrase. But if they had asked it some in another way, uh, do you think it's wrong for the president to follow a 1998 uh, treaty with Ukraine in order to investigate corruption by a high-ranking American official? Might get a different answer if you ask the yeah. question in a different way. You know, uh, what you, Steve was talking about, the idea of talking past each other. One of the most jarring experience as, uh, experiences that I've had as a writer is reading uh, screenplays and stage plays. And the reason I say that it's jarring is because as you're reading dialogue that's been written by professional writers for Hollywood or for the New York stage or whatever, um, it, it's, it's chaotic. 
It, it, it doesn't follow. Um, there's a whole bunch of non sequiturs, you know, it's just like one thing after another. And this one character's talking and this other character's talking, but they're talking past each other, the phrase that Steve used. They're not really talking to each other. And it seems jarring when you're reading it in a screenplay because you're not really listening when you're actually talking to people in real life because that's how you do it. Um, this, the writers have a good ear. They listen to conversations and they realize, look, uh, Mrs. Smith is saying one thing, Mr. Smith is saying something else, and neither one knows what the other is saying. They're just batting the ball back and forth. And when you see it put down in writing, um, it, it, it's startling to see that. And that's what's happening, I think, in our entire country. It really doesn't matter what happens at the hearings. And it's not because people have witnessed something and have different interpretations of what they saw. They had the interpretation before they saw it. They had already decided how it was going to play right. out. And every reinforcing notion that surfaces in these hearings right. piles onto the heap of reinforcement of their view. And every uh, one that doesn't reinforce that just goes, just goes right by them. It just blows by and you don't even notice it. Um, I find it uh, interesting because I'm reading a book, uh, I just finished reading a book called Range. And one of the ideas of this book, Range, is they're talking about how specialists in any given field uh, are becoming less and less likely to make major breakthrough discoveries and innovations. And it's because they have not only developed a body of knowledge that's very intense, but they've also developed a way, a heuristic, as Bill was talking about, a way of gathering knowledge, a way of interpreting knowledge and laying out that knowledge so that they're not able to see, take a cross-domain view. They're not able to synthesize anymore because everything's in their specialty. And more and more discoveries are coming as a result of people who have had a scattered background of all different kinds of experiences. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you'll see uh, evidence of people who are late bloomers in a variety of fields from art to athletics to music uh, to political punditry. Um, and it's, they've had a wide range of experiences beforehand from, you know, being a, a chauffeur to working at an insurance company and next thing you know, they're doing political punditry. Stuff like this actually happens uh, because we have a, a broad range of experience. And what I guess what bothers me about this whole thing is that I think too many of us, myself included, have narrowed our focus so that we can only see what we've already seen and only hear what we already believe. And that we need to take a, a, an aggressive approach to inviting the unlikely, an aggressive approach to bringing in contrary viewpoints. I go out of my way now to read books that I disagree with, to read articles that I disagree with, and to watch news sources that I know I disagree with because I'm so afraid that I'm gonna get caught in my little cloister thinking I understand the entire world when half of the people in the world are out there seeing things completely differently. I, at the very least, want to be able to understand how they think. So if you go into a, a process, as long as it's being done in a constitutional manner of an impeachment hearing, ideally, you'd go into it with an open mind and say, let me hear the evidence. But neither side is doing that. And let me just say this in closing. The Democrats lost this at the start. And the reason why they lost it at the start is not because of any evidence they may have had or witnesses they were going to call or beliefs about the particulars of the case. They lost it at the start because they didn't have a single Republican on board with pursuing this inquiry. That means all they managed to do is get the people who already agreed with them to agree with them. And that in a political realm is headed for nowhere. They can't possibly win. And when it's all over, the supporters of the president are going to be stronger than ever in their belief. The opponents of the president will be stronger than ever in their hatred of him. And nothing will have changed other than America will be a worse place to live. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Odd. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible.